Welcome to the Epilepsy Foundation's Ask the Experts, a spotlight on non-epileptic events. My name is Patty Osborne Schaefer, Associate Editor and Community Manager for Epilepsy.com. I'm also a nurse specialist at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm joined by two excellent speakers, Dr. Salim ben Professor of Neurology and Director of Epilepsy at the University of South Florida in Tampa. He is also on our editorial board of Epilepsy.com. Dr. Lorna Myers is a clinical psychologist and director of the PNES program at the Northeast Regional Epilepsy Group in New York and New Jersey. This is the second of our sessions on non-epileptic events, and we hope to address some of your questions and uh, concerns about treating non-epileptic events. So Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Salim, I'm going to call you that now. From your perspective, what are the ways to treat people with the psychogenic non-epileptic seizures? And then, Lona, I'm going to turn to you for your expertise on the same question. The first phase we discussed a little bit, and that is the explanation, presentation of the diagnosis. After that, if we accept that this is a psychological disease, which it is, it should be, the treatment should be in the hands of mental health professionals, a combination of psychologists and psychiatrists. Unfortunately, most psychiatrists and psychologists do not think like, like Lorna, and many of them are uncomfortable with this, and I have met prominent psychiatrists who simply don't believe that diagnosis exists. And sadly, the mental health community is not paying a lot of attention to this, as you can verify easily, and as you know, I've published on this, uh, lamenting about this much. You can easily verify this by looking at the topics of their national meetings, the APA meetings. Each year they have an annual meeting, and you can just go online and look at the topics and see what percentage of their meetings is devoted to this. And by the way, PNES is not a unique condition. It's a, it's a part, a specific subset of a more broad category that used to be called conversion disorder or somatoform disorder, and it has a new name in the DSM-5. But the point is, it's a whole category of disorders that mental health professionals, especially psychiatrists, are happy to forget about and not spend a lot of time on. You can also find evidence of what I am saying by looking at their patient education websites. Both APAs have wonderful patient education material. And look at the proportion they have, if any, on this category of disease, whether you search for conversion, PNES, somatoform, somatic symptom disorders. There is little to nothing on their patient education material, which tells you they are either not interested or unable to participate in the care of these patients. We need more learners, is basically what I'm saying. So, yes, I agree. We need more learners. Um, many of the questions were written in as to why is it so hard for me to find treatment, and my psychologist or psychiatrist, they say they can't help me, and the neurologist says, well, they're not the person to treat me now. So, uh, so then you, you you've tapped into a huge issue for everyone to be aware of. And it's not just the individual, but we have a big, the whole mental health field itself to try to, to work with. Lorna, can you address with me, as a uh, clinical psychologist, what are some of the ways of treating um, psychogenic non-epileptic events? Well, to begin with, uh, there are a number of different uh, ther therapies that exist. Um, so you may hear uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. You may hear psychodynamic. Um, you may hear about EMDR, eye movement desensitization, reprocessing, uh, exposure treatments, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll hear a whole bunch of different terms uh, to describe therapies. Uh, for the most part, I would say that what you need are certain ingredients, and it doesn't really matter that much uh, the specific uh, technique that is being used, but rather one that you have a, health prof a mental health professional who's open and willing to work with someone who has PNES. Uh, better yet, if they know what PNES is, but if they don't know what it is, to at least be open and willing to learn about it. And then there are certain ingredients that need to be present. One is to work with the patient on educating them and educating yourself, if you don't know about it, about PNES, what is it, um, learning uh, what the triggers are that preceded 
each one of the episodes. There's never an episode that occurs without a trigger, even though it may seem that way. And that is basically what you are doing in any therapy. As long as the therapist is willing to work with the patient, as long as they establish a good relationship in that sense, and they are working to delineate triggers and episodes and working to then branch out and make uh, in ways into uh, the rest of life and not allowing the uh, condition itself to limit them, um, then that is a therapy that will work. Um, then there are specific treatments, obviously. If someone has PTSD, there are specific treatments for PTSD, such as EMDR or prolonged exposure therapy. But for the most part, uh, any one of these treatments, uh, if done uh, with uh, motivation and uh, with care, uh, can be effective. There's no one particular treatment that is the effective way to treat PNES. I totally agree with Lorna. Let me add a couple of things, if I could. Yes. Um, there are a couple of things that are in the literature, literature and were recently published, as you, as you both know very well, uh, CB, uh, CBT, not CBD, CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, and the use of SSRI, so the antidepressant, uh, third generation or modern uh, antidepressants, can also help. But I could not agree more with Lorna, and I always think exactly what she says, which is, any psychological intervention is better than none, and none is usually what they get right now. I cannot tell you every week, there's not a week that goes by I don't receive a, an email from a patient or a family member because they are stuck between the neurologist and the mental health, with the mental health side saying either I can't take care of you or I've never heard of this, which I find incredible since it is in the DSM 4, 5, and before that, and I'm not the one who put it there. So it is in their field, and they need to go look if they've never heard of it. And if it doesn't say PNES, they might find it under other terms, conversion, somatoform, et cetera. But it, the, the poor patients and their families that get stuck in between and found nobody to help them is really uh, disheartening. And any mental health, any modality, as Lorna says, will be better than nothing. Somebody interested, somebody compassionate, somebody who can spend the time doing the treatment, whatever exact, exact modality. Should family be involved as part of this treatment? Lorna, do you want to take that? Uh, family, definitely, if uh, the patient is uh, a child, a minor, um, and that will be key to any kind of treatment uh, for there to be family involvement. Uh, for adults, uh, it depends on the particular case. Uh, there are times when family is very much a part of uh, the person's life and uh, and perhaps even of the problems that are that are occurring and so then family might be uh, it might be necessary to involve the family in those particular cases. You mentioned earlier when talking about treatment EMDR or you know what I call talking therapy whether it's psychotherapy, psychoeducational, whatever many times uh, people write in and say well could that cause my events because after I started the EMDR I started having these or whenever I do talk about the stress or things that are bothering me they seem to trigger trigger the events so what does a person do in that situation the fact that someone would notice that when they do talk about something stressful that it seems to trigger the events is uh, fantastic because that would be a very clear indication that uh, you can work with uh, and uh, where you see that there is a connection between stress and the episodes themselves. Can uh, a treatment, a psychotherapy, uh, produce PNES? No. What most likely would happen in those instances is that uh, the person already was carrying uh, a loaded uh, condition and uh, most likely when they began to dig and to uh, analyze some of these issues uh, then the episode came out. Um, but for the most part that would for me be an indication that they are on the right track and that uh, you would continue to work uh, with that person because there's clearly something there that came out and now you really do need to walk all the way to the end. You need to resolve that situation. 
that's a great summary of how to deal with that. Thank you, Dr. Ben Benice and uh, Dr. Myers, for your time and expertise on this session on uh, non-epileptic events. And thank you to our listeners. We hope you found the information very helpful. Please feel free to contact the Epilepsy Foundation 24-7 helpline if you've got specific questions or concerns that have come up while listening to the program. Uh, to contact someone for in English, please use 1-800-332-1000. For contacting someone in Spanish, please use 866-748-8008 or visit us online at www.epilepsy.com slash helpline. Thank you very much.